In the previous tutorial, I told you about the thousands of music loop files that you can download for free from Adobe. In this tutorial, I want to explain how you put them to use. So if you want to follow along, go get the 1402 Using Loops Multitrack Session in the Multitrack Session subfolder right there. What do we have here? We have a bunch of loop files. These loop files all came from Adobe, we're all free. And they're the six of the 10,000 or so that are available. Let me give you a sense of what they sound like. That's it. That's the one here, this next one. If you've got headsets on, you're hearing a great stereo sound. They just mic the heck out of this drum set, so it's just great. Here's a fretless bass. It's in F, or it hovers around the F. Here's a B minor. Like that. And here's a tremolo guitar in F major 7th. Tremolo in B minor. So you can see it's not just stuck on a note or something like that. It chords that kind of hover around it. So you pick these things based upon their notation, although you can change these by changing the pitch. So the fact this is F and this is F major 7th, they may kind of conflict a little bit, but they should go together reasonably well. And this is B minor and B minor, they should go together reasonably well too. So let me just show you sort of the process that I went through to select these six files. When you download all those zip files, they're going to be broken up into categories. And if they match the old categories, there'll be one that's called Funk and Rock 1. But they might not match the old categories. Nevertheless, this will be probably something like you're going to see when these things are put up online. And after you unzip them, you're going to get a folder like this. You open up the folder, and there'll be subfolders with different types of music within that larger style of music. So for example, Ballad Rock is the one we're using right now. We'll just take a look at Thick and Vintage instead. When you open up this, it shows all the instruments that are applied to that sort of subcategory within the larger category. And inside here are all the various you know, cuts from that one instrument. And here they're F, 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 and G. So I'll just play one of these guys by clicking on it and previewing it here. And here's a G. You can hear that one from F to G. And sometimes it doesn't get stuck on one note. Usually they kind of move around a little bit. There you go, something like that. So you go through here and you just listen to them. Now, the old way with the resource central is much, much slower, much more tedious, and you couldn't just zip through all the instruments like this. So it's much better that you can download them in big groups like this. So just go through here and select some files that you like, either inside the Explorer window like this, or Finder in Mac, or even with the media browser inside Audition. When you find some things that work for you, open them up inside Audition. So in Audition, you build a multi-track session with those clips. And I'll just give you a brief overview here, then I'll show you how to do it step by step. Here's that Ballad Rock Drum 1, this one. If you look down there, you see that I've looped it. Now, it doesn't start its life as a loop. It's just a WAV file. But you go to its properties. You click on that file and go to properties and say, loop it. Once you say you can loop it, then you can drag it out. If you look back here, I'll click away so you can see it better. There are these dashed lines. That shows the original size of the file. That's a measure. So when you loop it, you can one measure, two measures, three measures, four measures, that kind of a thing. So I've got that ballad rock drum one there, several measures, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I've got the other drum here for two measures and then back to the original one. And you can see that I looped it as well. But you'll also notice that it has a percentage here. I stretched it to have the measures line up with the other clips. Here I added the fretless bass in F as a solo with the drum. Then I added the B minor version of that bass. So we go from F to B minor. And down here, I add the B minor version of the tremolo guitar. So they pretty much line up. So I've got the drum and then the bass and then the guitar all coming in one after the other. It sounds something like this. In the sense of how that works, we go from the B minor to the F and have the F version of the bass and then the F version of the tremolo playing together at the same time. So let me walk you through this process. We'll go down here and we'll start with the drum. Take the ballad rock drum one there and put it on this track. I'll solo the track. And you can see that that's how big it is to begin with and it's not looped. So I just click on it to make it active and say, let's loop that guy. 
I want to bring it out, let's say, some number of meshes. I'll bring out six meshes. One, you can see the dashes there amongst all the other lines. The other lines are beats. Four, five, six, right there. There's six measures. So now I want to bring in the bass. So I'll bring in the bass. I'll start off with the F major. I'll bring it in after two measures, right about there. You can see that they'll line up there more or less to that other measure there. I'll loop it after I solo it. So I'll click on loop to make sure it's loop too. See the little loop icon appears there. I drag it up for one, two, let's say, oh, two measures. What that? Just two measures. If you're looking, you see there's the dash there for that measure. It doesn't quite line up with that one. If I pull this a little bit farther, you see this a little bit past. So they don't quite line up. So I can either stretch this one or shrink this one. Either way to try to line them up. The old way I could have just said, line them up. Tell them how many beats you want to have and what rhythm you want. It would just do it automatically. Here it's manual, unfortunately, but that's just the way it goes. So I just drag the stretch area here and slide it over a little bit. And notice how it snapped right there. So I got those measures to line up just fine. Now I'm going to trim it so it just has those two measures. And I'll bring in the A minor version of this bass guitar. Put it up against there. And I'll see how it works. So I'm going to stretch out a little bit where I can see the measure marker. Up oh, doesn't work because you got to loop it first, right? There you go. And now we'll stretch it out and look for that measure marker. You can see it right there. Pretty much lines up. I think it'll be fine, but we're going to let it go for the time being. It might need to be changed a little bit. Now I'm going to bring in that guitar. We'll bring in the B minor guitar right here. Put it down right below this one. And we'll stretch it out too after we solo it and loop it. We'll bring it over another measure there. So it's split up on the two measures versus the bass, which is split up in only one there. But they do line up, so that lines up pretty well there. So this is what we got. Let's see how it sounds. like a charm. So this is the basic process. Now, if the pitch isn't right, and we kind of got lucky because we could find ones that work together, but if the pitch isn't right, you can just select one and then go over to the properties panel and look under stretch. And let's say we want to turn this on. We'll put rendered on because when you do stretch these guys or change the pitch, rendered will give you a higher quality with these things. And the music, it's a pretty good idea to render it because it'll sound better. We want to go and change the number of semitones. So if I want it to go up, let's say, from B to C, it's one semitone. If I wanted to go from B flat to C, it would be two semitones. Let's have it go up three semitones, just so you can hear the obvious difference here. I'll just hit tab on that one. And it's applying that pitch change to it. I'll just solo it. Turn these guys off like that. And turn this other one off so we can just hear it in isolation. <laughs> So you can hear that we changed the pitch. I'll undo that by going Control or Command Z. So you can always change the pitch using the clip stretch property over here in the properties panel. One other thing, you don't have to use those loops from Adobe. You can take any snippet of music or even a spoken word or narration or a vocal and turn it into a loop. All I have to do is just put it in a multi-track session and click on loop inside properties. So any little snippet will do. So I hope you have a sense of how much fun this can be. Yeah, it can be a lot of work too, but the rewards, I think, are worth the effort.